Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, bringing you all my flea market haul for August 4, 2019, part 2. Got a great assortment of smalls along with a few bigger items that I'm looking forward to sharing with you all. Stay tuned! <laughs> So as I mentioned in part one, I have been trying to get back into a normal routine because I was away for two weeks. If you want to check out my York Beach, Maine vlog, click the card right here. I've got a great assortment of stuff that I'm really excited to share with you all. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Starting off with the bigger items for this video, I picked up this really rad cute, kitschy 1950s women's clothes hamper with the original lid. Paid six bucks for it. It's got marks all over it. Took a Clorox wipe just to get all the dirt off of it. Very, very cute and kitschy, especially with the poodle carrying, I guess that's a parasol. This looks very French to me. I guess that is French. Coiffer for coffee. But yeah, that's a very cute piece. Again, paid six dollars for it. I think I'm going to go ahead and list this on eBay and I'm going to probably ask $75 to $85 for this. And I think I can get it because this is very cute. Falls into the mid-century era, also it's very kitschy and shabby chic. I think someone will absolutely love this. If you happen to be interested in it, the link to my eBay shop is down below in the description so check it out, it'll be there very very soon. So everything that you see in this box is going to cost me $18 actually because I picked out two other things from a different pile from the same people and they quoted me the price for everything so I'm going to go ahead and pull everything out of this box and we are going to take a look at it. Okay so I counted out everything that I had in this box for $15 including the two items that I picked out. Uh, that were separate from the box that I paid 18 for, it actually equals a dollar a piece. So whatever I make on this stuff is pure profit. Uh, this was what caught my eye at first when I saw the box. This New Old Stuck Ideal Minimatic Mixer. And it comes with the stand. It's new, like I said, it's new in the box. I don't think it has a year on it anywhere. Just says imported parts to show country of origin. Battery operated. <laughs> Boxes or packaging is pretty darn beat up on it, so that might affect the value, but hey, for a dollar, can't beat that. Uh, this is a Mattel rollabout, I guess it's a toggle toy thing. I haven't looked to see if all the pieces are there, but I'm going to sell it as is. And it's from 1968. I got this Musical Monica. Again, it's brand new in the packaging. Uh, doesn't have a year on it. It's marked Hong Kong, but definitely worth more than a dollar. Same with this. Never seen this before. Junior Builder. It's a child's guidance toy. Never been opened. Uh, made in the Bronx by Child Guidance Toys Incorporated. I got a box of dominoes. I almost want to just take these out and just, you know stack them together and then watch them fall in a row. I don't think dominoes are worth all that much because again there's a plethora of them out there and they just... I don't know. And then I found a cribbage board from 1968. Doesn't look like it was ever ever used so that's pretty good. I'm gonna see what that's worth because I know again those are one of those things where you know just depends on who made it and yeah just there are many many contributing factors to that or I might hold on to it for myself because I kind of want to learn how to play so that's all the smaller stuff from this so let's go ahead and break out into all of the or the bigger stuff I'm sorry let's go ahead and break into all the smaller stuff all right let me go ahead and direct your attention to the first three items up top so I got this blue tip cigars sign Made of paper, like a really thick, heavy cardboard. 
I don't know if that's worth anything. I haven't looked it up yet. Like I said, nothing is researched. But I kind of thought that was interesting. I got a Donald Duck's Toy Train book. Uh, it's a little golden book, by the way. Uh, it was uh, printed in 1950, but since it's the 17th printing, it was done in 1974. That's probably going to go to Miss Stone Home. I got this really awesome Wooly Willy in the original packaging. It's missing all the dust, you know, being as old as it is. I might have my dad bring that to the antique mall, or the vendor space that he has, and maybe put five bucks on it and see if it'll sell, just because it's older and I'm, I don't think they're worth all that much. But then again, I will do my research first before I do that, and I will see if that is worth anything. Or I might keep it for Halloween. I don't know. Got this dime store toy motorcycle. Made in Hong Kong. It's blue. Motorcycles really aren't my thing, and I'm not sure that my uncle would really like something like this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and sell this. I'll probably ask $10 for it. Found a pocket-sized golf card game. It's never been opened, so it's brand new and sealed. Made here in the U.S. That might not be worth a whole bunch of money either. But you never know. Found a Raggedy Ann and Andy pocket purse from Hallmark, probably from the 1970s. It's marked made in Japan. Might clean up the vinyl a little bit, but inside's pretty clean. The outside's just a little bit dirty from handling. So I might wipe that down pretty well, and then I might sell that. That might be another $10 item. I got these metal whistles. Three of them. They're made by, oh, Kazoo Inc. Uh, in Eden, New York. So I got three of those. Uh, I might have my dad bring these to his um, showcase, and maybe I'll put two or three bucks a piece on them. Not worth a whole bunch of money, because again, another mass-produced toy. Got another giant polka dot noisemaker. That's just going to go to Miss Stone Home for crafting. And then the last two items for this stash of stuff. I thought this was really cool. Blonde in a bathtub mystery. I wasn't sure what it was at first, and it's just a lady in a faux bathtub, and she's magnetic. So you just put her in there. Oh, you know what? It's a magic trick, so I see what's supposed to happen. So the magnet, um, I guess the magnet slides down or something like that, and then the girl just magically moves or does that I'll fix that but I just thought that was cool and the fact that it's in the original box let me show you the original box too by the way so it's a blonde in bathtub mystery fascinating tantalizing intriguing you can place blonde in bathtub others cannot she always pops out I just thought that was kind of neat. I liked the pin-up-y aspect of it. I at first thought it was some kind of like dirty joke or like one of those dirty gag toys. And it kind of is, but it's neat in the same way. That's just going to go in the jar of old stuff. And then this was in there. It's one of those um, handicraft nesting jars. Kind of gets like a picnic or travel size cup. But that's not what's in here. There's a bunch of small gems in here. So we've got a pink princess phone, which I love finding these, especially cheap. These look like little connector toys. I have no idea what the heck they are. Uh, we've got... What is this? Looks like a roller of some sort. Does it open? I don't know what that is. Got this little whistle here. It's the Cracker Jack Company, so that's a Cracker Jack toy. And then we've got another, I think this is another Cracker Jack toy. Yep. And then this is like a little mini magnifying glass. This is also a Cracker Jack toy. So I thought that was a pretty good uh, little lot of stuff there for $15. So let's go ahead and jump into some other fun stuff, shall we? To conclude this video, everything that I'm going to be sharing with you all from here on out 
cost me $25. I did the math and everything that I'm going to share with you came to about 45 cents each. So let's go ahead and jump right in. These are two of the same items. They're baby animal coloring books. They're from different um, places. This one's from the First National Bank of Fairfield, Pennsylvania. This one is from the National Bank of Aaronsville. Arentsville? In Franklin Township, PA. You get, I'm sure if you live here or have heard of this town, you know what I'm talking about. Pick those up for Miss Stone Home. They got some really cute images in there, and I, I know she likes this kind of stuff. They're not Whitman's, but hey, close enough, right? So I gotta throw that in her bag of stuff. I got a no smoking desktop sign, definitely older. Now let me tell you, I spent most of my picking time in this guy's booth. He had so many small things. It was unbelievable. I got really junk drunk. And part of that was because I hadn't had a good junking fix in probably three and a half weeks because I didn't want to spend any money until I went on vacation, so. So I got that, and that slides out. I don't know if that's gonna be worth anything, but that doesn't stop it from being cool. All right, so in front of me, you see these uh, musical mallets. They're two-tone toot tappers by the Louis Marx Company. I just thought they were cool because they're on the original cards. It's not something you see every day. I'm gonna keep one of them and sell the other. Now, I, like I said, I haven't done any research, so I'm not exactly sure if these are worth anything. I just thought they were cool. Now, this one does have some condition issues. As you can see, the plastic has been uh, caved in. Since this one's a little off the card, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate for you how it works. It just kind of squeaks. I'm going to take some string or something and tie that together because the rubber bands that are holding them together are not exactly the strongest thing. Go ahead and take those out. Last larger item. Now, I don't really dig much into the political memorabilia because I don't know anything about it. I know there's a lot of reproductions of things out there, and there's just... I don't know anything about it, but I have never seen a plastic hat for the campaign of Goldwater and Miller. Here are the two candidates. I don't know if this was, like, a local government or if this was for our national government. The hat's in very good condition. The decal's in very good condition. If you were to stretch out the plastic or like feel around to see if there were any cracks, there's a few here or there, but for something this old... And that says... Keystone something Northridge. Can't make out what the rest of it says. But overall, it's in very good condition. If you've sold political memorabilia before, or have sold something like this before, let me know in the comments below what you got for it or what you think I can get for this piece here. Because I tried looking it up and I didn't see anything like it. And this, little, this will appeal to somebody, I think. But I don't know what to ask, that's the problem. Oh, here's a cool little stamp that I didn't see the last time. Let's see if I can get it to focus. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read it to you all and then uh, let you all see it at the same time, so bear with me. It says... Oh, I can't even make that out. Sorry guys, I thought I could uh, tell you all what that said. But I can't. But yeah, this is the hat for Goldwater Miller. Now, let me go ahead and show you all all the cool small stuff that I picked up. Okay, so this cigar box is full of fun small stuff that I'm really excited about because there are a couple items in here that are worth some money but I might end up just holding on to them in case I really need to sell something quick. So this will just probably end up going to Miss Stone Home. It's a Christmas tin. Probably for fruit candy or for mints or something. Pobery Press, made in the US. I think she will definitely get some good crafting or storage out of that. We got this little Vinyl dog. I don't know if this is a dream pet or not, but cool anyway. Picked up this John F. Kennedy Jr. Golden Guide. I'm not exactly sure if that's worth anything because I know a lot of JFK stuff 
everyone held on to when he died in from assassination from that jerk Lee Harvey Oswald in 1963. Now these are probably what's going to bring me the most money. These are state decals, I think. I think they're decals. They're Lindgren Turner Company decals for different states. We got New York, my state of Maryland, which I'm probably going to end up keeping. We got West Virginia, we've got Ohio, and we have New Jersey. So I think for four of these, I might be able to get $20, $25 out of. So that'll basically pay for everything that I'm about to share with you all. I love finding these kinds of pictures, these old tin pictures. That is definitely turn of the century. I just love finding stuff like this. Just awesome, awesome. Because this is, you know, of course, showing you all how things were and how people dressed in the early 1900s. Love that. Found a Coca-Cola bottle lighter, which I might be able to get $20 out of. I have one already, so I'm not going to keep this one. Saw one in an antique mall today, and they wanted like 25 bucks for it. I got this. Um, this looks like the two of the seven dwarfs. Some kind of hopping toy or something, or walking toy. Don't know why I snatched this. This is for a Buick. Maybe it was the blue color and the emblem. That's why. Got this awesome pin for Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. A sesquicentennial, 1797 to 1947. Picked it up for the rabbit foot. I know these can be kind of valuable because they're made with real rabbit feet as opposed to now. Picked up these screwdrivers. My dad was collecting them for a while and then he just decided to stop collecting them so he said you can go ahead and sell them. I might ask, I don't know, I haven't looked up what these go for. They're all Phillips head. I think those were the only three in there. Now this was really cool. This is a Captain Crunch whistle from I think either the late 60s or, or like 1970. I'm gonna clean that up and then I'm gonna have that in my jar. I looked up comps for these and some of them go for upwards of 40 bucks. So if I ever have to sell this in the future, I can. And what's even cooler is it's got the original string that it came on when you got it out of the cereal box. I didn't see any of them online with that. I got two of these uh, black baseball players. I thought they were very cool looking. Both mark Japan. Those might be cool to add to summer displays maybe, or maybe even for crafting. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. Found an awesome stolen car key. Again, that's another jar item. Never seen anything like that before, but like I said, I was just throwing stuff. If I thought it was kind of neat for the time, I just grabbed it. Found another pocket mirror. I don't know if this is religious or if this is just a picture of some sort. Thought that was kind of interesting. Found a tin litho horse jockey. Found a broken Mr. Peanut whistle. But that doesn't bother me because it's just going to go right in the jar anyway. Found a whistle. Found a novelty sheriff badge. Deputy sheriff badge. It says Japan. I guess originally whoever had this wanted $350 for it. Got a little mini top with, I guess, duck heads on it. Found a pitcher. Plastic blue plastic pitcher. Found a JW whiskey keychain. Found a heart ring. Stands beverages for Paps Blue Ribbon Beer. Found a bunch of these license plate pieces. My dad told me that back in the day, if you lost your car, 
there would be some kind of box that you could go drop it in. I guess people were a lot more honest back then than they are now. Really a shame. Now, I don't know if this is exactly old, but I thought it was interesting anyway. It's a glass ring. I don't know why, but I can see like a hippie in the 60s or 70s wearing something like this. Found a really awesome Christmas pin. Pull the little string here and looks like Santa's going giddy up. Or if you have a dirty mind like me, it looks like he's doing something completely different to this. Found a toy gun. What does that say? It says made in Hong Kong. It's a mini Luger. Lugger, Luger. Found a little mini baby rattle in the shape of a chicken or a chick. Found a chicklets charm keychain. Oh, here's another screwdriver. Again, Phillips head. No, flathead, sorry. I found a bunch of these Zodiac uh, matchbook covers, I guess. I didn't look through them yet, I just kept them bundled. I will see if there are any Taurus ones in here, and if there are, they're going right into my jar, and I might go ahead and sell those. Maybe $10 for the bunch of them. Found an Esso Tiger charm. I guess this was something you got as a promotional piece or something for getting Esso oil or guess getting Esso gasoline. Found this really cool thing. I, I was really drawn to the color. Good for 15 cents in MDSF. This is for the Hose Hook and Ladder Company in Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. Got another one of those license plate pieces for 1976. Another princess phone. Got another awesome pin. This one says, look me straight in the eye and say that. I got another one of those um, fun little toys that you would get out of the vending machines. It's in the shape of a clock and you gotta get the balls into the holes. There's another license plate piece. This came out of the, uh, I didn't know what the heck it was, but I just thought it was really interesting. Oh, here's what it says. Tear off the lens, assemble in three pieces. So I guess it's missing one piece, but came in that. And then we got this Durant pin, I guess. Again, I was just throwing stuff in this bat little box here because I knew I was going to get a really good deal on all this. So yeah, that's all of that stuff. So let's conclude this video. So that concludes my flea market haul. If you want to check out part one, click the card right here. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. All of the links to my social media accounts via Instagram are down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Be sure and stay tuned, I've got an antique store haul, along with a recent thrift haul that I will be uploading within the next few days. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!